Hey boys and girls, Jim here once again. Time to show you something um, a little different, a little familiar, but still a little bit different. I'm going to show you a new model by Jerry Moen called the Panther. And as you look at this, if you've seen my prior videos and you've seen the videos that I've done on the Blue Max, you might look at this and go, but Jim, boy, that looks a lot like a Blue Max. Well, it really is. What you're looking at here is almost the next evolution of the Blue Max, and it's called the Panther. So instead of the entire body being done in carbon fiber, what you've got is a full titanium frame with a completely seamless inlay of carbon fiber. And we'll get to how special and unique this carbon fiber is in just a moment after I give you a, a brief tour of the knife. So what we've got here is basically the same size as the Blue Max 2. Let's get this lined up here. So it is essentially the same knife. You'll notice the difference in the grinds. Bring that up so you can actually see the flats. Where this is a very prominent top swedge. This is a uh, much, much higher grind on the primary. And then obviously those are both smaller than the original standard Blue Max. Put these butt to butt as everything in the world should be. And yes, the original Blue Max is much, much larger. <clears throat> Let's get these little guys out of the way. One of the things that you'll notice immediately if you've handled a Blue Max and gone to this, the action on this one is so much smoother. It's also a much faster flipper as well. Once we get past the detent, yeah, it just wants to drop right on closed. And, you know, you've got different materials here. This is truly all carbon fiber. All you have for titanium inside is obviously your back spacer serving as your spine and support. And then your lock, which is a tab that is wedged into a pocket in the carbon fiber. Then he's built up a race around where the bearings sit around the titanium pivot. And it has its own unique feeling as you open and close it. Now, all the Blue Maxes are officially retired. They are done, and they will not be made again. But with the Panther, and it's not really available yet, but you can start bugging Jerry, uh, and you can start uh, bugging Mark Strauss over at Knifeology. He's a dealer for Jerry, uh, and you can start getting on the list for them. This is something that again is going to be limited he hasn't decided yet how many he's going to make but I'm gonna tell you right now this is one that you don't want to pass up on uh, for those that don't know and did not watch the prior videos Jerry is an amazingly talented knife maker he's part of the knife guild he's a uh, uh, direct he's actually the director of the knife guild he's a voting member um, he's got a lot of power a lot of pull in a really prestigious organization that recognizes the best of the best knife makers in the world so obviously somebody at his level in the knife makers guild has to be a really talented knife maker and I think this knife may demonstrate it even better than the blue max He's changed the way his locks are set. He's also uh, decreased the size of the, uh, the engagement tab, if you want to call it that, for the lock. So everything is a lot more low profile. Everything works a lot more smoothly. Um, this is one of the first five that he's built, and he's getting ready to change where the detent is sitting in here. So he's actually going to be putting it um, in, a, in a completely different spot for even more strength because he's noticed that a lot of his customers for the Blue Max were law enforcement and they were seriously hard using it and they loved it because it weighs almost nothing and it was a great tactical style flipper he's also reduced the size of the flipper tab you'll notice there it was very large and very prominent he has chopped it down by probably a good 30 or 40 percent making it more low profile it's overall a tougher more purpose-built knife because he realized hey it's not just people that are you know collecting knives and may just be carrying a knife for whatever reason but there are people out there that are hard using it I need to beef it up I need to make it tougher so that's exactly what he did I love the backspacer here you get a titanium backspacer that blends in so well that if you didn't see the screws here you might think from a distance it's an integral it's not you can barely see the seam uh, you know from the titanium scale to the titanium backspacer 
and the backside titanium scale. But it's beautifully done. Um, he has a really great pocket clip design on here. You'll notice it is blind screwed, so there's no additional unnecessary hardware showing. It's got a nice duck bell on it. And someone asked me when I posted pictures on Instagram, they said, with it coming up so severely there, is it anywhere near as bad as the original Microtech DOC clip that I had dubbed the FU clip? It's not, because it sits in a different spot. Instead of sticking you right here, it's actually following the pad over this knuckle. So you actually don't even feel it. You don't even realize that it's there. And I'm going to give it a good hard squeeze. And you see there's no mark there from the clip. So yes, it's actually very, very comfortable with no hot spots. I love the shape of it. It flows with the design of the knife wonderfully. It's tremendously effective. It really works and feels like a spring clip, but it has uh, obviously the design of a custom sculpted, 3D sculpted titanium clip. Works great, looks great. Couldn't ask for anything better. I would have looked at it initially and said, oh geez, I wish it was a little bit shorter, but then that would have been digging into the meat of your hand when you grip it. So again, showing the experience level that he has, he's certainly been there and done that a hell of a lot more than I have, that was the perfect spot to end the clip. And notice when it's closed how wonderfully everything just kind of flows together. It's just a wonderfully compact, slim, easy to carry knife. Uh, your finger does not snag the tip of the blade, even though the, the tip does come very, very close to the edge here. See if we can get the camera to focus. There we go. Really nicely done. Great shapes overall. He was considering doing a different blade shape for this model to be further away from the Blue Max, but this shape complements the frame perfectly. Now, let's get to the fun part. This scale, I don't want to say scale, this inlay, which is absolutely seamless. If you close your eyes and Helen Keller it, you can't tell that this is not all just one piece of titanium. You just close your eyes and run your fingers over it. It's perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. There are guys charging twice what this knife is worth that can't do inlays that well, and it still shocks me. Now let's talk about the carbon fiber being chosen because you've never actually seen carbon fiber quite like this. This is shredded carbon fiber, which yes, we have seen before, but there are two very special things about it. Number one, you're seeing some of that blue coming through. And number two, you're seeing these little flecks, little flecks of gold color. What they've done is they have infused flecks and specks of uh, copper into the shredded carbon fiber. Now you don't feel them. It's not like having lightning strike carbon fiber where you may feel the pricklies coming through from the wire. You do not feel it at all. But yet when, especially when the sunlight hits them, oh my goodness. This is an experimental carbon fiber being made only by one supplier and he has made this available right now only to Jerry. So this is one of only a couple knives Jerry has made with this material and uh, only his knives so far have this material. Very, very cool. I don't even know if there's a name for it yet, to be perfectly honest with you. There is more to the story of the origin of it, but I'm not going to go into it um, except to say you are very, very lucky to get your hands on this particular carbon fiber when you buy one of Jerry's knives. And I don't know how long it's going to be available for. But beautifully done all the way around. Superb action. Crazy sharp. It's everything that you need in a perfect little EDC package. So if you want just a little bit more heft than the Blue Max 2, still be smaller than the original Blue Max, have the same great ergonomics, have the same useful blade shape, this honestly is going to be a great way for you to go. Now, I don't really want to get into a big price discussion because Jerry has not decided 100% how much they're going to sell for yet. I can give you a ballpark. You're going to be somewhere in the range of a thousand bucks, maybe a little bit less. 
but that's pretty much where he settled in on it for this particular knife <clears throat> and again you'll be able to buy it directly from Jerry Moen you can visit him uh, on Instagram and, and watch as he makes stuff it's at Moen Custom Knives or you can reach out to Mark Strauss who is a phenomenal knife dealer really great guy over at knifeology.com he is one of Jerry's dealers I know for a fact that the next five knives that Jerry is, or the first five really, that he's making publicly available, he's making for Mark, going straight to Mark. So that would be, that would be who I would bug first, you know. And if he says no, I can't reserve one for you, or no, they're already all reserved, then go email Jerry and bug him. But I don't know when they're going to be made available. All I know is uh, soon. What a great little knife. He was a little bit unsure about the uh, finish he was going to use, so I, I kind of made a request. I said, you know, you know, you've made some really, really, really dressy ones that went for a couple of grand. I think one went for like four grand. It was all mirror polish and it had mammoth ivory, uh, excuse me, uh, mammoth inlay, and it was really beautiful. I said, but the general everyday guy isn't going to want a polished blade and a polished frame. Because he doesn't want to wipe fingerprints off of it all day. And honestly, in and out of the pocket a few times, you're going to start scratching up that polished finish. I said, if it were me, I would love to see a matte bead blasted finish with a light tumble to kind of smooth it out a little bit and bring out a little bit of a sheen. It's got a nice working finish. And I would do a similar finish on the blade. And that's precisely what he did. And I think it looks awesome. Uh, when he was building this, he also made some where he anodized the frame blue. Those look great, too. There's going to be a lot of options, I would think. I think if you call him up and say, hey, Jerry, I want one um, in bronze with lightning strike carbon fiber. I don't see why he wouldn't do that for you. He loves to make people happy. And if you have suggestions, and you go, hey, maybe I want to you know, glass bead on the primary bevel and mirror polish on the flats. I'm sure he's willing to listen to anything because guess what? He's a custom knife maker, and that's what puts custom knives up above production knives. You can get it tailor-made to how you like in many cases. So there you go, guys. A relatively short video. As I've mentioned before, I am trying to cut back my videos from 20 minutes to between 12 and 15, and I'm kind of hitting that mark right here, so that makes me happy. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down below. Thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.